The spiritual enemy loves to work through bored people. High up in command, you have very wealthy individuals who have kind of made it when it comes to material resources. They can pretty much have everything they want in life. And once this happens, they often become very bored. And so they start looking for things they can do to entertain themselves. You see this a lot with retired people. Have you ever been in a neighborhood where the retired old man or old woman is always calling the cops on the young kid who's either speeding by on their bike or the teenager who's going too fast in the neighborhood? And it's always this cranky person who wants to sort of monitor what everybody else is doing and um, start stuff with them. And so you're seeing this on a large scale. The wealthy people will also work through, uh, or at least the demonic entities, will work through people who don't really have much going on in life. And they will give them this new purpose of destroying society. Cancer itself tends to operate in stagnation. And what it is essentially is turning on oneself. It's the cancerous part turns on the body itself and starts to uh, replicate cells that are incongruent and not in harmony with the body. And so that's what's going on. It's going on on a macro level, working through loads of young people who don't really have a purpose and the devil will prey on these people, usually college age, and get them to turn against the whole and start hating their country and hating society and hating uh, anything they can direct their attention to. Um, the devil will do this because it wants to enact this hate. Uh, a lot of it is projection and a lot of it is denial they refuse to look inward and see that the uh, cancerous part is part of themselves. And so uh, this is what's going on. We have on a, the upper echelon, the elites, who are enacting out this, this enjoyment out of torturing the people through putting them in poverty, injecting them with poisons, gaslighting them. They themselves want slaves. They want sex slaves. They want um, slaves who are working for them but never really get ahead. They just make just enough to get by. And it really, it's always been like this. This is how the devil operates. And he will inject his minions into the people, uh, especially the bored people, and they will enact out his plan. So on one hand, you have the devil's demons who are working through the super wealthy. And many of these people have demons who are money hungry, greedy demons, uh, mammon, and then also sexual demons. Uh, they enjoy perversion. And that's how they spend their lives. They don't really provide much of a service anymore because many of these very wealthy people are not the entrepreneur. They are not the one who actually created the product or products who made them wealthy. They are of generational wealth. And so they are very bored. They get to a certain place where they just sort of do a few things and they don't do much for society anymore and they start looking for other avenues of entertainment. So that's one sector of the demonic manifestation. And then again, the other sector are the pawns of Satan. These are the people you see out protesting against the righteous. These are the people out there spray painting monuments and destroying the beautiful nation 
that the forefathers really worked their ass off to make. And they will have them focusing on any imperfection that they can come up with and use that as their righteous justice for destroying the nature. That's what the devil does. He will seek out some imperfection in you and send demons in to live there and accuse you. Whereas Christ will forgive you. He will forgive you for your imperfections when you repent, you say it was wrong, Lord, and he will seal up that wound. Um, these demons would not be as successful if the righteous would repent. If they would repent for whatever feelings of guilt they have and move on. When a righteous man or woman is standing up to these demons, they will run. They will not have any foothold to enact any of this stuff. So that's, in essence, what needs to happen. These demons will often use and work through people who are traumatized. And if they can enter into an entry point, which usually comes through trauma, they will sit there and live there and they will captivate these minions. They will captivate these people who are too weak to really see what's going on. They don't have enough knowledge. They don't have enough wisdom. They don't have the insight to know that they are captive by demons. Uh, you can see the hatred. You can see the ignorance. You can literally see them projecting and using all the whole list of defense mechanisms. Displacement is a big one too. They will uh, start beating and smashing things because they themselves are not happy in certain areas of their life. They will really seek to destroy anything uh, that is of the platform they are standing on. Many countries would be so grateful to have the wealth, to have the security, to have the standards, the, the cleanliness, which is now diminishing. Uh, they would be grateful to have all the commodities, the um, ability to press two buttons and have things at your doorstep, uh, to drink and eat clean foods and nutritious foods. Uh, they would love this. Um, however, we have engendered and created a nation and really allowed a nation of spoiled brats who have become very bored. And so now they are looking for outlets for expression and they don't have it. And so what better way to express themselves than through pornography or destroying the nation. And that's what the devil is doing. He's, he's basing his whole platform off preying off the bored people. Uh, he does not want you out there working. He does not want you active. He does not want people who are thinking for themselves and creating new things. He wants you working as a drone in some sort of cubicle somewhere where you are being given orders all day and you basically feel like a slave. This is the corporate new way of working. Uh, much of it is not working with your hands. And I'm not saying that all these jobs are bad, but many of them just keep people in mental slavery for a large portion of their lives and they wish they were doing something else. And they feel like they can't uh, get out of it. They feel enslaved. And that's really what the devil wants. He will entice people through these high salaries, but at the same time, people have all these bills that just basically drain them. And some of them may be medical bills from having to sit in certain positions and undergo such stress in their lives where they truly don't have freedom. And so it's a trade-off. The devil will give you things up front and then in exchange, you 
give him your freedom. And God did not call us to be slaves. He wants us to be free in Christ, using our true gifts for him. So that's what we're dealing with. We Again, we have two levels. We have the pawns, who are the young people who are usually just above the poverty line. They're barely making it. And then you have the extremely wealthy who have lots of material power. However, many of them lack true love. They may have emotional love, but they lack the humility and the love of God. They lack gratitude. And so they're using, they are using the pawns to enact their agenda and also they're enriching themselves more and more and it's this ravenous craving attitude and this craving desire that most likely is being caused or at least instigated and enhanced by demonic entities within them so um, that's what we're dealing with and it's a it's a nation full of demonic affliction and I don't like the word demonic possession because uh, actual true possessions where someone has complete uh, or a, not someone but a demon has complete total control over a person are rare people have the ability to resist these things if they would wake up to what's actually going on uh, the devil wants to enslave the righteous through things like pornography, through things like drug addiction, through things like uh, incessant entertainment where they have no time to create anything for themselves, they become like drones. They don't know how to think anymore. Uh, I highly suggest people uh, taking time out of their day to get away from the electronic. Buy physical books. I know there's this big push for electronic books, and I'm not saying they're bad, but what I think is even better is getting away from the electronics totally and opening a physical book that you can touch, that you can get away from the screen and actually read something. When you read something, you create things in your mind. You are independent from the screen telling you what to think, and instead you use your imagination to think and that's what God wants us to do is imagine things uh, this is the creative aspect of being a human it is what the Lord has given us as being his children uh, as being an image of him um, the slave state enacted by Satan does not want you thinking. He wants to do your thinking for you. He wants to have you uh, in an anxious state, surrounded and being affected by EMFs. We are constantly on edge. And he wants you using the same words that these people use. He wants you enslaved by the language itself. I've noticed that there's a lot of people out there and they really are like NPCs. I didn't really know what they were talking about until lately about the NPC, but it's basically like a bot. Like you're playing this character and you don't even have any way of truly thinking for yourself. You're just playing this role. And that is a lot like what we're seeing. People these days, they respond basically all the same every now and then you'll get somebody who's broken out of the matrix but it is rare and typically the people also that have broken out of the matrix these people are not always good sometimes they are highly narcissistic and they're full of themselves and yet they have broken out of the matrix so you get two types of people who have broken out of the matrix you have truly the sons and daughters of the lord and then you also have these disciples of Satan who have broken out of the matrix. And you can tell right away, these people were super full of themselves, but you do need to give them a chance, I do believe, because 
Sometimes what you're seeing is just on the surface. I have discovered people over the years that I actually ended up liking when, when I first met them, I thought they were um, very narcissistic. So it's important to endure these things with patience until the Lord can truly reveal the truth to you. Okay, chosen one. So this is the mes message for today is that we have two primary sets of people who the demons are working through. And when you can see it, you just see it. When you see it, you see it. You know it to be true. And there needs to be a massive wake up, a massive returning to God. God accepts us in our humility, in our gratitude for him in our reverence for him, in our fear for him, in our awe-struckness of his power. And that clears the way for deliverance. It clears the way for him to come in and show us the truth. Okay, so thank you, Chosen Ones. I appreciate your attention on this. As always, feel free to comment. Feel free to disagree as well. And again, thank you. Uh, so much and I do have some courses available for your enjoyment off the website now I'll put those below and these are very affordable if you want the premium content then tap into these babies and learn something interesting you can cancel anytime and um, really good content so again as always thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time